you know, obviously oncologists want to get effective therapies to the right patients. And, and like Heather said before, they want to recognize when a therapy is going to be ineffective. And so, Roy, uh, kind of on a, on a global level, um, you know, obviously I think we've made advances in educating doctors about the importance of identifying EGFR mutants, ALK translocated patients. The other ones are growing, ROS1, perhaps BRAF and others. How are we doing with, in terms of this kind of more personalized approach in this disease? Well, I think we're doing well. I think that the most fundamental thing is uh, most physicians uh, would agree that you need to get good tissue on patients with lung cancer, both at the time of initial diagnosis and at relapse, because tissue is helping to guide our care. And then, of course, we've got 15, maybe 20 percent of patients that have the so-called actionable mutations. I dare use that word because it's a moving target. But I think we would all agree that an EGFR mutation and an ALK rearrangement are actionable. ROS1 is actionable. And then, of course, you know, we've learned through the Lung Cancer Mutation Consortium work that, you know, selected patients with BRAF or, or some other uh, mutation might benefit. But then we have that other 80 percent, and I think that's where, to personalize the care, we are moving towards, um, well, we're already doing an adeno versus squamous, but now we're getting deeper and we're, we're looking at the immunotherapy. And I do think that there will be a marker, whether pd one is our marker, whether it's in tumor cells or immune infiltrate, who knows. But I think we will ultimately find some marker that we can use. It might be a genetic marker, too. It might be that we're going to take a look at the tumor and, 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 do, and there might be a neoantigen that we know, you know tells us that this, this tumor is going to uh, be more sensitive to uh, T cell regulation. It might be that there's something, some other uh, regulator in the HLA, you know, in, in the normal uh, uh, genes of, of a patient. So there are a lot of things that, that, that need to be worked out. But I think we have that concept of personalization. I don't know what you're doing um, at Pittsburgh. Every week at Yale, we have a precision medicine tumor board. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's quite well attended. Genomic tumor board, we, right. we call it, yeah. We went with the National Precision Medicine, <laughs> although ours, ours came before they announced that. Okay. But, but anyhow, we, we get together. We can only go over a couple of cases. Um, but the thing is, Mark, you've got to have ways to treat these patients. Why do all the screening if you don't have drugs and trials? Right. Right. And you know what kills me is, um, and there's a lot of use for this, the N of 1 approach is good, but it's not going to move the field forward. Right. So we need clinical trials that match patients to the drugs. As we said, the NCI has a big effort in this. Uh, companies and private groups are doing this as well. We need to sort of make this happen. Yeah, Anne, I wonder if you could, uh, I mean, we, we do, um, Roy mentioned the uh, second line squamous uh, trial and, and the profiling that goes on in trying to get the right drug to the right pa patient. We have other efforts. Uh, absolutely. Alchemist and others. Right. So with the subsets of patients, we're becoming smaller and smaller. So we really do need to have national efforts to try to accrue to these trials in a rapid manner so that we could get the drugs to the patients. So the cooperative groups have worked with the NCI along with pharma and philanthropy to really create large scale national programs, which I think are extremely beneficial. So we have the SWOG is leading the lung map trial that uh, Dr. Herbst mentioned. Um, the Alliance, ECOG, is running Alchemist, which is basically a, a surgical trial where patients get surgical resection and then based off of their profile, they'll get, an, for instance, if they're EGFR mutant, they'll get an EGFR TKI um, as adjuvant therapy. Um, also, they're including ALK there as well. Um, so those patients will then have adjuvant ALK inhibitors. Um, the ecog Akron group has actually sponsored the MATCH trial. And so the MATCH study is doing wide-scale profiling, and depending on the mutation, they will be given a targeted drug. For instance, um, the MATCH trial has as a sub-protocol for smoothened patients. Now, this is not a common one that we uh, actually know about, but smoothened does occur in patients, and if you give them vismotigib, um, they actually can get a response. And so very small population of patients in lung cancer, we estimate maybe 1% to 2%, but this has to be a national effort to accrue to that trial. And, and I think it's also important to mention the RTOG efforts in stage yeah. 3 disease that are looking at both the EGFR mm -hmm. mutant and ALK mm -hmm. uh, positive population. Yeah, right. So um, it really has integrated up into earlier mm -hmm. stages of, of, of disease. 